I got an email from uh, Florence, Italy. Dear James, thanks to you I've lost 15 pounds and stopped smoking cigarettes. I smoke three cigars a day. I'm an artist. I do sculpture and painting, but I'm not happy with either of them. Do you have any advice? For me, this is a problem because I don't know what kind of advice the person really would like to have. So I wrote back and I said, well, congratulations. I'm glad you lost weight. Usually it's just the opposite. People stop smoking, they gain weight. You don't lose weight. So I thought that was interesting. But I also found that interesting that someone had connected the body with the work because that's something that's not something that we do very often. Mostly for us, I notice in this group, mostly where we like to keep it is in our heads, is in our minds. So we have no real connection between the body and the mind. The work is about making that connection, but we haven't made that connection yet. But it's interesting to me that somebody else, oh, I have no idea how long this person has been in the work, how long this person has been dealing with these ideas, or whether this person has been in a group in, somewhere in Europe or not. I don't know anything about this person other than what they, they told me. But he has made this connection between the ideas and the physical body. And this is a connection that has to be made. If the connection is not made, you're not doing the work. The ideas are preparatory for the work. The work, the actual work, is a matter of working. It's a matter of connecting the centers. It's a matter of getting the energies to flow between the centers. It's a matter of getting ourselves under higher influences or better energies. It's about getting better fuels into the body so that the body can operate better in accord with, in harmony with, the mind. The harmonious development of man. Does this sound familiar? Good. As long as it sounds familiar, at least you've heard it or read it somewhere. And that's a good thing. So you may not be applying it. You may not be actually doing it yet. But if you've heard it and, and, you, and the ideas are familiar, then possibly it's just a matter of time before these things start to be applied. So I wrote back and I said, could you, could you be a little more specific? Could you clarify this? Exactly what kind of advice do you like? And he wrote back and said, the truth is my father is an artist. And they all think, him included, that my paintings are similar to his. My sculpture is only from my world, but my painting, my paintings are what sells. I would like to find a more personal way of painting. I really don't know why I asked your advice, but something is bothering me. I feel that I'm not really living my life. Thanks for answering so fast and for the compliments that we always believe. And I thought, good for you. You know, he's, he's staying right on top of things. He's uh, observing the fact that, you know, that I, I wrote back. So he's important to me. And... We like that. So the false personality likes that. But he noticed it. And he kept it in check. And I like that. Said, well, good for you. He's working. So I wrote back and I said, okay, let's step back and take a look at all this from a work perspective. Of course your paintings are going to be similar to the paintings your father did. What is it that's painting? What is it that's actually doing the painting? If it's not, it's, if it's not the acquired part of him. Of course it's the acquired part of him. What is it that's painting? It's the acquired part of him. It's false personality. I'm not saying that the essential part of him has nothing to do with the painting. But I'm saying that predominantly the paintings are being done by false personality. How do I know that? Well, I don't really know. But it's a, but it's a calculated guess. That on this planet, people are operating from false personality. If you could go to Vegas with odds that I have, the, with the same kind of odds that I have on that, You'd own the place in a week because those are great odds. On this planet, if someone's doing something, the chances are it's from false personality. So that's a pretty good bet. But I don't know. Only he could know that. We can be certain the false personality, which he acquired from his parents, teachers, peers, others with whom he came in contact as he developed, are all represented in the work, in the work that he's doing, the painting work that he's doing. Just like the collection of people that you acquired your false personality from is manifested in everything that you do, in how you comb your hair, in what you wear, in what you eat, in how you talk to people, in your accent, in, in everything about you. I said, you're not satisfied with your painting. Good. And I don't mean the not satisfied that any serious artist must experience when he looks at his work. We don't perfect a painting. We settle for the best we can do with the skills that we have when it's time to sign it. We look at it and say, it could be better, but I have to stop sometime and start a new one with what I've learned from this one. We hope that next time we'll be able to avoid the mistakes that caught us this last time. We attempt to remember all that we learned last time and all the times before that. Painting should be a conscious effort 
If it's not, it's worthless from a work point of view. You see, the thing is, is I don't care what he wrote to me about. If he wrote to me about writing a novel, writing a poem, making a bolt in a factory, preparing a dish for a meal, I don't care what it is. The principles of this work apply to it because this is the fourth way. The fourth way is in life. This is this guy's life. It may, it's not your life. You're not an artist. You're not a painter or a sculptor, but it is his life. And so in his life, this is the best way for him to awaken, is to do what he's doing. The best way for you to awaken is to do what you're doing, but to do it consciously, to bring your awareness to it, to make it just as important as his paintings are important to him, to make taxing your children to work or to sports events just as important as his painting is to him, as his sculpture is to him to make it just as important, just as meaningful, to make it the linchpin that holds your life together, that holds you and the work together, the place where that touches, so that you can move forward. You say you feel as if you're not really living your life. Good, you're not really living your life. Something else is living your life. The machine that life made, that's what's living your life. You're beginning to see the machine and realize there's something else, something more. What else we may not know yet, but we sense there is something else, something more, real, something more us. I'm of the opinion that if you continue to apply the work principles to yourself, you'll find a more personal, a more real, a more essential way of painting. Until then, enjoy the sales. They're selling, right? Good. Wonderful. Enjoy that. Now work on yourself, but enjoy the sales. They'll enable you to keep on painting, eating, living, smoking cigars, and learning. This is a wonderful way to find in life. When I say wonderful way to find in life, I mean this way, this fourth way, this path. It's a wonderful thing to find in life. We're very fortunate to have stumbled upon it. The longer and the more we walk it, the more we value the treasure upon which we've stumbled. Thanks for writing, sharing your struggle and your questions. They've given me the opportunity to look at myself from a work perspective and to remind myself of what is important in this life and how to get from point A to point B effectively. What good is a question if I don't apply it to my own life? What good is an answer that I haven't dredged up from my own experience of applying the work? It's no good. It's just more blither and blather. And the world is full of that. The world is full of books that people wrote that have no idea whatsoever what the books are about. They just wrote them because they wanted to be famous. They wanted to have a, they wanted to be a published author. They wanted to have people think that they were important. They wanted to think that they were, that, that they themselves were important. The reason people write books, it's, it's a very strange reason. There are a lot of reasons, but they all boil down to very few, actually. It's usually pride and vanity. I don't mean to be rapping on authors. I could say the same thing about people who are doing paintings or sculptures, or people who are doing anything. Because this world is run by false personality. This world is run by the machine. And so it shouldn't be a big surprise that we're doing things mechanically. It shouldn't come as a huge shock. If it were any different, this whole world would be different. This world is not different. This world is the same world that it's always been. Well, how can you say that? Easy. I open my eyes, I sit back, and I look. Without criticizing it, it's just what we're doing. We are still cruel to one another. We are still asleep. We are still selfish. We're still greedy. We're still fearful. We're still wrapped up in darkness. We do not know ourselves. We do not know of what we are capable, one way or the other. We live in darkness because we have not learned to observe ourselves effectively. But we will learn if we keep practicing, if we keep applying the ideas. The whole thrust of this is the application of the ideas. Thank you for your question. Florence, Italy. Cool.